Welcome back to 90 Day Dental, day nine. It's been a great start so far and I hope you've all had a great Easter. What we do have lined up today is a UK exclusive. We've got a UK first on posterior morphology, which is a session that I've been looking forward to since we started this project. Govinda Berth is one of the best in the UK at giving this topic with his absolute attention to detail being paramount. And I've been looking forward to his tips today. Take it away. Hi there. I hope everyone is well and safe. We're going to week four of lockdown. I'm just really going to run through some hints and tips on kind of posterior morphology. Uh, today's really on the uppers. I'm going to start off firstly with something that morphology has a purpose. So every time we see a custom marginal ridge, a groove, it's there for a reason. It's our job to really replicate that one, kind of restore it and see. Uh, we see fantastic cases on Facebook, on Instagram. Uh, there are times when we do see some of these cases which have frankly made up morphology. Okay, some things are made more elaborate, they tend to think more we try placing another cusp or another groove or another fissure pattern we actually place fissure staining. It can actually highlight these errors. So we've got to really kind of, kind of go back to basics where the form follows the function. So nature's designed teeth in such a way that again, they're more kind of efficient kind of within their function. So that form there is there for a reason. So it's our job as I said before, it's trying to replicate that. So if you go into the uppers, on a four, five, six, and seven, and show the outline form. Again, they're in a straight line. Now that doesn't rep that doesn't really replicate what we see in the mouth. Okay, there is a curvature to the arch. We'll replace that. And suddenly see it, the teeth go slightly askew. And the contact points are a little bit more buckle than in the centre of the tooth. Now when we place the outline form there, and then place the kind of the occlusal table within that, you can see there's a discrepancy. Now, when we actually look at that from the side view, now the premolar, you can suddenly see how that's made up. So the outline form is the most bulbous part of the tooth from the occlusal surface, uh, occlusal view, whereas the kind of the, 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 the occlusal table is made up of the marginal ridges and the cuscus ridges going around the tooth. So when we go back to that view, we can then start to place in our cusp tips. Now, particularly on the premolar teeth, see that the, kind of, the palatal cusp tips are a little bit more mesial. Maybe they're not directly kind of through the middle of the tooth. They actually go a little bit more mesial. When we start to place in the kind of primary grooves and the fossa, the kind of pits within these teeth, you can see that on the, on the first and second premolar, they are slightly different. In the first premolar you can see those bits are a little bit further apart. On the five you can see that they're a bit closer. Now as soon as you put the grooves into those places you can actually start to see and look a little bit more like teeth. Now when you start to see the cusp tips are natural insects it's just to draw straight lines going straight across. So again on the four and five you can suddenly see it's a straight line going joint the cusp tips. On the six and seven, you suddenly find that you get two hot cross buns. Okay, so that's not, not something that six and sevens look like. So we're going to go pretty much once. Got to go a step back. Uh, when we do that, to draw the, the correct cuspal inclines, you can see on the kind of the four and the five, the palatal ones are a slight angle. They're angulated like the cusp tips. Okay, on the palatal aspect, they go at a slight angle. The two are quite more medium inclined. On the six and seven, you can suddenly see there isn't a particularly a straightforward kind of cuspal incline from the tip to distal buckle kind of cusps at all. Okay, because this is the part of the oblique kind of ridge, and that runs pretty much at 90 degrees from the buckle part, then kind of swings back in at 45 degrees or so to meet up with the power, the, the mesial palatal cusp. It's quite important to, to leave that space and have that big ridge going in those two directions. So the temptation we see, okay, and an awful lot, is trying to join those two cusps together, okay, by having an inclination going across there and a bleak ridge. Now the problem with this, it doesn't allow any kind of space for the mid buckle cusp, the lower six, to sit where the fossa should be. As soon as you do, you get an occlusal interference. Now, how do I know this? I did this plenty of time when building up my balance. You join the two cusp tips together, and then you spend the next 10 to 15 minutes grinding that down and carving that out. 
And it's only when you start looking at teeth and you realize actually it should have a space. So that oblique ridge goes about 90 degrees and angles back in, which will then leave you a sufficient fossa for the mid buccal cusp to sit into. When we look at that actual model, okay, you can start to see if you join those two cusp tips together. So from the mesial palatal to the distal palatal, this distal buccal cusp, you can actually sit and that will be an interference. So we've got to go a step one step back from that. And it's got to follow that kind of angle and then kind of perpendicular approach. So you start to see just by having those kind of shapes, lines onto the actual teeth, okay, you can actually start to see it looks a little bit more like natural teeth than what we'd expect. So just having these, a, a picture of this in your mind when we're restoring teeth, we will make things a little bit simpler. You see those onto models, you can actually start to see even those kind of kind of areas highlight a little bit easy. Now, again, if you have any queries, questions, I've put my email onto there and to Instagram as well. So hopefully that helped. Thank you very much. Govinda will be back later on in the series to give us an exclusive on the lower posteriors and also both sets of anteriors. So keep a watch out for that one. Until then, we'll be back again tomorrow. See you then.